why a lot of people struggle to learn programming. They dedicate a lot of time spending late nights, but still get a slow progress. Okay, is it even possible to do something less and achieve more? The less you do, the more you do. I had always been a skeptic about this statement. From childhood my mother and teachers taught me, I have to study and work hard if I want to succeed in life. This algorithm literally says, working hard equal better results. And this was so integrated into my brain for a long time that it was almost impossible to imagine any other results for me. But when I grew up, I quickly realized success doesn't work like this. The most successful people on the planet in any field are not the most hard workers. And decoding is not the exception. So how can you learn programming faster? My name is Daniel and today we will talk about how to study smart, not hard, and convert it to real life examples into programming field. Let's go! Brain capacity. Let's talk about your brain. And let's compare it with the phone battery. As you know, the battery has a fixed capacity during the day. It has its own power and brain power decides how focused you are when you are trying to learn something complex. Brain power is also a force that affects how quickly time feels to pass after waking up. And it's not the same throughout the day. It means in the morning we can have much better brain performance compared to later in the day. And the later it is on the day, the less energy we can spend. It's something similar to when your phone goes into power saving mode, when it's 20% left. That's why it's so important to use the first 4 to 5 hours of your day for the most important tasks. That's why schools and universities have lessons in the morning. Unfortunately, I was the person who always grabbed his phone first thing in the morning. Opened Instagram and time stopped for me. Because I have a flexible working time, I was guilty on spending my morning time on really stupid things. Before I knew it, sometimes even two or more hours could pass, and I didn't even start my day. Soon I learned that these early waking hours are very important, because at this time the rational thinking part of my brain is still asleep. We are less likely to overthink and stress during this time, and this can help help us get into the state that they call Wu Wei. In the Chinese philosophy of Taoism, or in English, it's simply called the flow. The flow. What's the way to get good at subjects like math, computer science or programming? Well, if you want a fast and easy way to learn, you should check out Brilliant.org. It's pretty cool and can help you learn stuff quicker, much quicker. And you know what's awesome? No. You will learn by doing. Brilliant makes you think about the stuff you are learning in different ways through interactive challenges. Plus, you can use it on your computer or phone. That's why it's super easy to learn anytime, anywhere. You only need 15 minutes a day to dive into a bunch of cool subjects and really get the hang of them. Brilliant's got tons of lessons, whether you are just starting out or aiming for some advanced stuff. At Brilliant they keep things fresh by adding new stuff each month. Exploring data visually is one of the new courses. It teaches you how to tackle data analysis questions by using summary statistics from visual aids, like box plots, line graphs, scatter plots, bar charts and histograms. And what about interactive challenges? They are like your secret weapon for solving real-life problems and getting the hand of those tricky concepts. No matter why you want to become better at STEAM subjects, whether it's for your job, getting better grades, or just picking up coding skills, you can visit brilliant.org slash Daniel. Here you can try everything Brilliant offers for free for a whole month. Or you can simply click in the link in the description. The first 200 of you who do it will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Think about it. First of all, let me introduce you to the flow. It's a high-performance state people usually get into when they really enjoy what they are doing. In the flow, your performance is much more higher than usually. You don't have to force anything, and every next thing comes as a natural continuation of the previous one. You may have felt like this when you met somebody you were interested in. You felt like the conversation flew by itself. The connection was real and you didn't even think of touching your phone. Has anything like that ever happened to you? Feel free to comment below and share your flow moments with us. I usually use the flow when I code or manage tasks in my company. Due to this flow state, I also tend to become max productive and spend way less time on a task that takes other hours to complete. In the flow, I literally sometimes don't want even take the breaks. But how to get this? flow state and is it easy? And my answer here, it depends on your routine and habits. Let me explain. Prioritize the early hours. 
Guys, if you found this video useful, please press the like button. It helps me create more videos for you. So, in order to get to the flow mode, start the important part of the project or tutorial video right after you wake up. Wake up, wake up. You remember I was saying about the brain capacity, right? When I wake up to do my morning routine and after this, the first thing I do is set task for the day. I try to avoid any kind of distractions and especially stupid phone scrolling. The goal now is start from the task and go to the flow mode right away. I have the maximum focus in this condition and spend the first 2-3 hours of the day in the flow. When you pick the first task to work on, choose the one that motivates you instead of taking the hardest one and it helps you to stay engaged with next tasks. Using this method I spend a way fewer working hours to achieve the best results possible. And if you want to use it, take into account your brain power patterns. Remember about your brain capacity because it's very similar to the way our smartphones work. Minimize distractions. Another important point you need to master to get rid of all possible distractions. Guys, to be able to stay in the flow mode as long as possible, you need to escape from these distractions. Every single phone notification literally takes away your time. After the distraction, it often takes even 10-15 minutes to get back to the flow state again. But how possible to avoid distractions? in the world of distractions. Ok, there is an approach called focus distractions, which specifically aims to manage your bad habits and plan your time for them. How does it work? Set aside a 2 hours of your time when you are usually less focused or less productive. For me, it's preferably the later part of the day. During this time, I can use my phone for Instagram or any other kind of activity. I can let go of the pressure to constantly check myself and just feel more relaxed and don't feel guilty that I waste my time again. By doing this, all the time I was able to organize my distractions and limit time for them. And this time it really helped me to become even more productive. Set specific tasks and deadlines. Next, better to set specific timelines even if you don't really have them. Here is a good real life example. When a student is trying to learn a huge amount of information at night before the exam and finish the writing assignment minutes before the set deadline. But how do the students make it work? It turns out that the task itself can become smaller or bigger depending on your focusing capacity and the amount of time you spend on it. Because when you have a deadline you maximum concentrate and become a highly productive person. And probably you have a little bit stress. This is how a human brains work at this condition. But be realistic here, it doesn't mean you can do a week's amount of work in 10 minutes just because you set a deadline. And how this approach can be applied to real life. You can start by setting a timer for every 2 hours and see how much highly productive work you can get done in that time. Next time we'll be writing time estimation in front of each task in your daily task list. And then just try to follow this time estimation. Give all of your attention to this task with time limits. And you will mention it goes much faster. But in case you decide to spend the whole day on the big complicated task, you will notice yourself reaching for your phone or taking more and more of those so-called 5 minutes TikTok breaks. Or attempting to finish your favorite TV series. That's why a good way to work with truly large task is breaking this task into smaller manageable parts and just go from task to task with the necessary breaks. This approach will allow you to focus and work more efficiently. And it feels mentally much better being truly productive instead of working for 20 hours per day. Keep track your progress. Guys, keeping a work progress journal is like having a helpful friend. It is important to keep tracking of your daily, weekly, monthly accomplishments. Every period of time you will be able to see what you have achieved. And it will boost your motivation when you have motivation gaps. Write down the tasks you have completed during the day, with the amount of time you spend on them. And then, at the end of the week, sum up, analyze and look for the areas where you can improve your performance. By keeping a record of your progress, you can see how far you have come and what is actually going on with your productivity level. Compare it with the map that shows you the path you have traveled. This approach can really boost your motivation and give you a sense of accomplishment. Acknowledge the milestones you have reached and celebrate your achievements. Whether it's completing a difficult assignment or understanding a complex concept, take a moment to celebrate your success. It boosts your confidence and keep you motivated to continue studying. The work progress journal also helps you to stay more organized. By writing down your tasks and accomplishments, you have a clear overview of what needs to be done. Check. 
This way you won't waste time on unnecessary activities or feel overwhelmed by a long to-do list. Also, adjusting your study plan or task list based on your journal insights is a smart move. If you notice that you are spending too much time on one task and ignoring another's, you can change your schedule. You can also make changes if you find that certain study methods are not effective for you. So the journal gives you the flexibility to adapt your approach and optimize your learning process. Use active recall technique. And last but not least, how you actually can memorize all these code rules and learn programming efficiently. I don't know, you tell me. Oh. How do you ensure what you are learning is actually staying in your head for a long time. Well, there is a thing called active recalling, and there is a two ways you can use it. First of all, stop just taking notes when you're watching your programming course. Do it instead in the smart way. When you are studying something new, instead of writing down what you learned, write down the questions that you now know the answers to, or tasks that you know how to do in coding. Hike the planet! Hike the planet! Shut up and get in the car! This technique is actually often used in study books at the end of every chapter. When you can find these types of questions like can you answer that, active recall creates meaningful connections in your brain, which makes it less possible for you to forget any piece of information. The second way was introduced to me when I actually was learning the code. Once I start working in a team, my teammate asked me to explain how this function in code works, and I tried to explain the logic behind the function in the code, but I was surprised that it wasn't so easy to explain. That's why I quickly understood that I have to spend more time on this. So the best the best way to remember something is to explain or even teach it to somebody else. In case you will try this approach, you will quickly mention some gaps in your knowledge. So just focus on it and become better. All these tips help me to be much more productive than an average person. Use the power of flow state, optimize your productive hours, minimize distractions, set clear goals and work with active recall technique to accomplish tasks more quickly. If you found this video helpful, feel free to subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to click the like button. I make video weekly and have a lot to share, so stay linked and feel free to ask questions in the comments. Think about it.